Hello everyone, my name is Zhao Yan from Intel Corporation. Today I'd like to share with you about sharing IO, IO memory page tables with TDP in KVM. This topic is prepared by Lu Bao Lu, Pian Kevin, and me together. This is the agenda for this topic. Firstly, we'll state the goal for sharing, its advantages, prerequisites, interfaces required, and then we'll introduce an important concept of page and page table pinning, which is required by DMA in IO MMU side when IO page 40 is not enabled. And as TDP root update is frequent in KVM, we'll show how it is doing now with uh, sharing enabled. And uh, then we'll show some rough boot up performance data and uh, the to-dos for us in future. This is a goal for sharing. As we can see, currently, the IO MMU side is using IOPT for translation from GPA to HPA when VIO MMU is, is not enabled. And uh, in the C CPU side, the TDP is used for translation from GPA to HPA. The two sets of page tables are essentially duplicated. So our goal is that we want to share the TDP in K C CPU side to be used as IOPT as well in IO MMU side in order to take below advantages the reduced memory footprint unified page table management for data page tracking page fault handling and something else that cannot be listed here it may achieve higher performance by reducing unnecessary TDP depth. The sharing should have below three prerequisites, that is the same address space, compatible page table format, and non-conflicting page table content. For the same address space, currently the only supported address space for sharing is from L1 GPA to HPA. So the QMU needs to check with the KVM side that whether the TDP is enabled and ensure that the vCPU model does not include EPT or MPT feature. And uh, at the same time, in the IO MMU side, there should be no VIO MMU enabled. And uh, if there's VIO MMU, it should not be in shadow mode. But if it is in nested mode, it is okay that if the second level page table holds the mapping from GPA to HPA. For nested VM, currently the sharing is not supported because we're not sure whether the two sites are always using the same address space. For the SM mode in x86 platform, as it is using a different address space that cannot be shared to IO MMU. So when a vCPU is entering the SM mode, its previous non-SMM mode EPT must not be destroyed and must be kept for sharing to the IO MMU side. For the compatible page table formats, in order to check whether the two sides are using a compatible page table formats, firstly, we need to have a unified definition for the page table format. So they can be looked like as below. They can name they can be named as uh, format EPT level 4, which means the EPT is used for sharing with four level, four level paging structures, or it can be format MPT level 5, meaning MPT is used for sharing, and uh, five level paging structures is used. So this is the handshake sequence for format negotiation. Firstly, the QMU needs 
to ask KVM site is currently shared page table format. For example, KVM can return EPT level 4. Then the QML will check whether this EPT level 4 is compatible with the page table format used in IO MMU site. Take Intel IO MU for example. If it is currently using first level page table only, which is not compatible with the EPT format, it should return failure. But if the Intel RMU is configured to use second level page table and is also using four level paging structures, it can return success. Then the QMU can allocate an IO asset with format EPT level 4. And when there are devices attached to this IO asset, the IO MMU can request the KVM to share its TDP. The KVM then will share the TDP used by vCPU0 as the IOPT to IO MMU. For non conflicting page table content, first we'll look at the page table entry presence. If a GFN of a page table entry belongs to a KVM user memory slot, this PTE must be present and pinned if the pages are used for DMA pages when the IO page 4 is not supported. But if this GFN is not used for DMA purpose, or if the IO page fault is supported, then the PTE can be present or can not present. When a GFN of a PTE belongs to a KVM private memory slot, this PTE is not present in IOPT before sharing, but it, it is safe to be present in IOPT after sharing. And uh, currently, there are only three private memory slots. The first is the local APIC private memory slot. The DMA write to this GFN range doesn't go through DMA remaps. And uh, for TSS and identity page table private memory slots, they are only enabled when the unrestricted guest is not enabled. And because they are reserved in E820, guest, the DMA write or read to the, these ranges are safe, just as the vCPU kernel mode access. For the read, write, and uh, execute bit, the two sites should also follow the same policy, that is, read only for GFN ranges in the read only memory slots, and read write for GFNs in other memory slots. The vCPU can also set the execute bit on, but this bit is currently ignored in IO MMU as no device is using it. For the right protection for live migration, if the IO page fault is supported, the right protection is allowed. But if the IO page fault is not supported, the right, pro right protection must be disabled. So for dirty bit, either all the pinned ranges are set dirty or a transversal of the page tables are required for the dirty bit. This is the interfaces required for sharing. After the QMU attach device to the IO set, which is shared from TDP, uh, the IO MMU side need to first call the request sharing interface to the KVM. They need to specify whether PIM is required and register is notification callback. And there also should be PIN and unpin interface when the DMA is without IO page for support. We'll discuss about this interface later.
and the third interface is the page fault interface when IO page fault is supported. The IO MMU side need to forward the uh, page fault into the KVM side when there is a IO page fault. And when the KVM side updated its TCP root content, root or content, it also need to notify the IO MMU side in order to update its IO asset root and flush the IOTLB. This is the concept of page and the page table pinning. So when there is no IO page fault in the IO MMU side, in order to avoid the DMA fault, all the pages used for DMA are need to be pinned using the pin user page API with long-term parameter, with, uh, with long-term as its uh, flag. And also the TDP pages, TDP entries are also need to be pinned. So it means we, also, we need to do the pre-population for the pinned ranges for DMA. And there should be no zap and the PFN update for the pin ranges. And uh, if the page table pages have a parent linked, they cannot be reclaimed. And when there's a request to update the PTE permission or the page size is changed, the TDP entry must be updated. And uh, this update must be an atomic update. Here shows how the atomic update is done. When there are splitting huge pages and uh, updating of PTE entries first, we need to prepare the substituting PTEs first. And then the old TDP entry must be updated from an old non-zero value to another non-zero value. And uh, this is not the case in KVM currently. We need to do a lot of code change to KVM. For the page and the page table pinning interfaces, for the IO page fault not supported case, uh, if we want to pin all ranges in user memory slots. We can do that in the memory slot add interface. But if we, we want to only pin a specific range for DMA, then we need to introduce a separate pin and unpin interface. We can do it in two ways. The first way is provide an UP, UAPI in KVM the cumulative calls the pin and unpin for DMA purpose. This way has a pro that the cumulative doesn't need to call the map and unmap into the IO acid because the IO acid is currently using a third party TDP. The second way is to provide a kernel mode interface for pin and unpin. The IO MMU calls this interface into KVM. In this way, the QMU still needs to call the DMA map and unmap into IO MMU. Uh, but this way, uh, as as the IO asset is using the third party API, the call of the call of DMA map and unmap is not that good. But uh, this way has a pro that it is straightforward to hold more IO MMU side info in the pin and non pin API. For example, we can specify whether to set the snoop bit in the TB entry. When there is a TDP root update in KVM, we'll show how it is doing now when sharing is enabled. We can see from the left side that if two vCPUs are using the same row, 
then it will reference they will reference the same MMU root page. If a vCPU is using a different row, it will reference a different MMU root page. And as we share the TDP root, uh, TDP of vCPU zero to the IO MMU side, we will increase the root count of MMU root page used by vCPU zero. And when the vCPU zero want to switch its MMU root. The right side diagram shows how it is doing now. At first, the vCPU zero need to call the KVM MMU unload to decrease the root count of the old MMU root page. And then it can call the KVM MMU load to increase the root count of the new root with the new row and update the EPTP in VMCS. After that, it need to check whether the new row is for SMM. If not, it means it's not a SM mode TDP, so it's safe for sharing. Then we will increase its root count by one and do the pre-population of TV entries for pin the ranges and uh, call the root update notification into the IOMMU side. The IOMMU will update its IOPT root. And after that, it will decrease the root count of the old MMU root page. And after that, the old MMU root page and its children pages can also be safely destroyed. Here's the boot up performance. Uh, it's just a rough performance data without any optimization yet. In this implementation, all the VM pages are pinned on, pin, on, pinned on user memory slot creation and deletion. And uh, when the vCPU zero is switching to a new route, or when there are memory slot add and huge page splitting, the TDP was pre-populated. And uh, we also caused the IOTLB flush in the IO MMU side. And uh, this step takes around one second. From the, from the table, we can see that the baseline data without sharing for boot up is 29 seconds. And after sharing, if huge page is enabled during pre-population, it takes 32 seconds for boot up. The extra two seconds is taken by the 132 times of pre-population. The time is even more if the pre-population is with huge page disabled. In concept, after sharing, the boot up performance can re reach as before sharing by reducing the TDP root update count. Yes. So here's the to do's for us in future. We want to figure out how the snoop bit can be set in the TDP side and uh, what is a unified way to uh, track the dirty page. And we want to support nested VM and uh, do some performance optimization, for example, to reduce the page table root update count and uh, support the huge page for P2P, something else. Thank you.